live from Chatterwood Primary School comes Mr. Puzzle and Monsoir Knight. Hello, Mr. Puzzle. I'm getting slightly bored being at home, not really sure what to do. Well, why don't you listen to Mr. Jones's next YouTube cast and do your work? Hey, YouTube subscribers. So great to see you. Uh, this is a video for my wonderful year uh, 10s and 11s, coming at you live from the beautiful sunshine from Chatterwood Primary School. Guest appearance here from Mr. Stone. Hello. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we're fortunate enough to be working in this glorious setting today with some of our wonderful students. And I uh, hope you're all well. And yeah, today um, I want to talk to you, hopefully you can see my wonderful face in the sun, um, about some of the work we talked about last week regarding our exam and essay question, looking at the progression of Winston and O'Brien. Um, and I really wanted to talk to you mainly today um, about the progression of Winston. We won't get far because this is a hugely complex play um, and it lasts for many, many pages. So let's have a look at the beginning section. That's what I want to do. Um, I would advise you the work that I set you last week or the beginning of this week um, to go through and just green pen some of your responses which you may have. Uh, so forgive me for looking here. I've got my wonderful uh, helper here to give you some wonderful tips. Um, so I wanted to explain the book club on page 14. I think this for me is the first moment where if we're reading the text we get slightly confused. Um, on page 14 it's where Winston is thrust, thrown into the deep ends of this book club. The whole play is based around um, the appendix of the original 1984 text by George Orwell. Um, and the confusing part for most people is this section here. Now, if you're confused whilst reading it, that's good. That's the whole purpose of Duncan Macmillan and Robert Icke's kind of concept. They wanted you to feel the confusion of which Winston feels. What you have at this point is you have either Winston looking in the, into the future at people reading his diary, or you have them looking at him as this central character in this play, this story. So if you're reading it and you're like, why does it keep fluctuating from like this part of the play to here? And they keep shifting. That's to help with one of the, the key themes, which is that reality versus fiction, that idea of it, what's real. And, and I think up until the part we're gonna look at today, forgive me for looking at my laptop, which is roughly page 23, like the whole part is Winston not really sure of where he is or what he stands for. And it's until later that he, kind of gathers this certainty okay so task number one what I'd like you to do please is I'd like you to read from pages 14 roughly to about 16 pages 14 to 16 and you've got different central characters in this scene you've got the mother you've got the father you've obviously got Winston the man uh, you've got the host as well so you've got a few characters there to be looking at um, just checking all those characters. And then obviously you've got Martin. What I'd like you to do is just to list those central characters and just to give me like a little definition of their persona in that scene. And I'll start you off. If you look at the father, he's a really, really interesting character because what he does is he loves the sound of his voice. He speaks uh, with a really loud, large, booming um, diction and language. He's very opinionated. He shuts people down really, really quickly. Um, so that's just an example of what might, you might do. You might have father, really opinionated, shuts people down, uh, uses a high volume. Then you might have the mother, and you might start off, and I'll give you her first attribute, is that um, she changes her opinion really quickly. So if she has an opinion and I kind of um, oppose her opinion, she'll forget her opinion and take mine on. So, so each of the characters in that short section have different attributes, characteristics of who they are. So task one is to go through Pages 14, 15, 16, have a little look at the central characters I listed and just pick out their, uh, their persona, their attributes. Um, the next part I wanted to look at about Winston's progression is on page number 19. Let me just double check that's right on my notes. Yeah. So this is, a, again, another moment. Um, in lesson, we talked a little bit um, about when Winston really commits and changes his mind to the concept of bringing down the brotherhood where he sees like a mirage or a flashback 
and we talked a lot about um, Christmas Carol and Scrooge, looking back at the past, and, and what we looked at was where Winston sees himself as a child, um, and and his mother talking about the rations of chocolate. And we have that exact same moment here, uh, with the mother and the child, and Winston looking in. So my task two would be, as an actor or an actress, um, what physical skills might you use um, as the ca character of Winston um, on, pages, on page 19, when he's looking at the mother and child? Okay, and you'll notice it's literally like that long. It's it's four lines, four or five lines. It's not a huge task. So again, I would just have Winston physical skills. I might use like a confused expression with a diminished posture to reflect, and just pick out like two two physical skills for our task two. So task two, two physical skills of Winston on page 19, whilst he's looking at the mother and the child. If you're really confused with that, go back to our work a couple of weeks ago when we explored with the characteristics of Winston looking at himself when he was a child. So that's task number two. Um, and then the final thing I just want to look at about the progression, because his progression is absolutely huge, is on page number 24 when Winston meets Charrington for the first time. Um, he pulls a cord. The, the whole set evolves and changes, the lights illuminate, and he's in this kind of strange place, this antique shop that he that has references to the past. Um, and I'll, I'll give you a little kind of clue. We talked about, like, why is Winston so interested in the past? It's because he, he has, like, fragments of memory. He can't remember the full story. Uh, for him, though, the past is, a, like, a time of hope and happiness. Um, and... I think the reason why he trusts Charrington so much in this scene is that um, him and Charrington have something in common. They both have a connection with, with the past, or at least Charrington pretends he is. Um, so this, this kind of third task is all about Charrington. Um, and who is he? Charrington is a spy. He works for Big Brother. Um, he, in this scene and throughout, we, we see him two or three times pop up in the text. He is dressed as an old man, he wears spectacles. He's meant to be quite frail and unassuming, which is unthreatening to Winston. Um, and Charrington kind of plots little like nuggets in his mind to, to kind of force him to, uh, to kind of commit thought crime. He passes him the snow globe, uh, he points to Winston's diary, he kind of, and then in the end, he, he's the one that offers him this kind of secret room which, we, as we know, isn't secret at all. Um, so there's these lovely moments in this, in this scene between uh, pages 24 and 25. So what I'd like you to do, like knowing a little bit about Charrington, um, and if you're unsure, have a little look. Google Charrington uh, 1984 character synopsis. You'll get some wonderful things up on like spark notes, etc. They'll give you a little indication. But in this moment, he is a, a, a character which is a spy. He is there to trick Winston into committing fully not just thinking about the thought crime but actually acting upon it um, he's there to lure him but Winston sees him as an unassuming unthreatening character so what might his costume look like at this moment so Winston needs to see him as an, as as unthreatening as unassuming but the audience need to see him as for what he really is so you'd have to have like a variation of, of things to represent that. So costume and accessories and hair. And I'll give you the most obvious one. The most obvious one in this moment is um, Charon wearing a pair of spectacles made of like a fine, really thin, fi fine piece of metal. Um, and his, his um, glasses would be slightly tinted. And again, that would um, support um, like the idea of um, trust in this moment, for example. Okay, so I want you to create a, a costume design for Charrington on pages 24 and 25. So there's three really good tasks for you to have a little look at there. Um, let me just recap what they are. Task one was to go through that beginning section where we meet the book club people. Um, the host, Martin, the man, the woman, the mother, the father. And, and to just outline their definitions and characteristics. So, and I gave you a really good example with the father and also the first part of the mother. Um, the second part of the task was to kind of think about that A1 question. Uh, you are playing Winston in the moment between his mother 
when he sees the mother and the child and what physical skills might you use with him looking in on that moment and then our third task is coming back to the idea of Charrington and what costume would you have Charrington use in this moment and I really want that the idea of use like designing his costume thinking about how the actor or the actress would use this costume on, on certain quotations and this would link to our exam questions for B1 and also section C in the exam process if you're wondering um, and I'll just give you those page numbers again so page task one um, will be on page 14 in our set text task two uh, will be on page 19 and then 24 25 is where he meets Charrington um, plenty to be getting on with any like questions queries uh, just drop me an email um, other than that adios from the wonderful school here at Chadlewood um, uh, I'll speak to you soon ciao